My name is Habil Olaka, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Bankers Association, the umbrella body for the banks in Kenya. I think 2020 was a very promising year um, uh, from the beginning because we are just coming from a period when the interest capping law had just been repealed in 2019 until March 2020 when the pandemic um, hit, it was declared a pandemic in Kenya. I mean, it's been a very tough year, I would say, for the entire industry. So the restructuring of uh, facilities for customers, almost 1.3 trillion over time, and also standing for smaller enterprises, uh, working with the staff to change and support them during this period. It also demonstrates the resilience of the Kenyan banking sector. I think what is clear is that uh, banks were the very first ones out of the gates to come out and try to figure out how, how they're going to support their customers. Banks came up gave moratoriums, working very close with the central bank, moratoriums and other accommodations to their customers. What the banks have done is to really ensure that those businesses that were thriving before COVID thrive after COVID. Central bank did move in with a very accommodative monetary policy, uh, which enabled banks to be able to continue supporting the MSMEs. We have got almost 50% of the total loan portfolio um, restructured because we are talking about 1.38 trillion shillings out of the total 2.9 trillion shillings for the total loan portfolio which is almost half the total portfolio that has been restructured. The accommodative uh, monetary policy by the central bank which released some liquidity into the banking sector out of the total 35 billion shillings that were released almost 93 percent of it has already been dispersed to the deserving SMEs. I mean, what really matters for the banking sector today is seeing the customer transcend the crisis and come out stronger. And that's for me is important. There's a, a silver lining into it from our side as, a, as, as an industry and uh, through the Kenya Bankers Association. Remember, there's also the standardizing of processes for customers, uh, ensuring that they are able to get their services with it. Remember that we haven't closed a single day from our business as an industry. This is important for us. So the restructure has been, we've put aside a lot of, I would say, billions of shillings uh, on stake as an industry. This year we have seen the greatest number of customers move on to our digital channels across the industry. We have seen more banks invest in making technology more available to their customers. So what has COVID-19 then taught us? What they has taught us is that we have to operate with agility because the reality is COVID-19 came, we were shut down, but money never sleeps. Similarly, banks have also put in place um, a capacity building program, uh, especially through the Inuka Enterprise Development Program, where um, MSMEs are supported through capacity building programs to be able to be de-risked so that they can be able to access the credit from, from the banking sector. The credit currency scheme, which is uh, the first in, we say, across the region, uh, is a very exciting initiative that has been set up between the banks, uh, the central bank, and also the national treasury. In many ways, small customers, or what you call small and medium enterprises, who have no access to credit because of no security, <clears throat> because their cash flows are not strong enough, get a chance to qualify. And so through this, the government uh, put in place a three billion shillings uh, scheme. Now with this, then banks can leverage on it and be able to extend um, almost fourfold the amount of the scheme in terms of uh, lending to deserving uh, MSMEs. For me, it's the most exciting part of innovation during a pandemic for the financial institutions. And I think what you will see now going forward is more banks will invest in technologies that ensure seamless delivery of services seamless account opening, seamless uh, payments, and many other things that banks do for their customers. So I think overall, COVID has taught everybody that banking as a service can be delivered well with technology. I will be confident to say to clients of the industry that the banking sector will stand for you, as we have always done, until our customers are able to come back into their businesses before. So we are hopeful and optimistic that with the beginning of 2021, and with the containment measures put in place and the economic recovery beginning to uh, pick up and uh, bounce back, 
will have a much better 2021.